everyone. Welcome. Welcome to this week's Energy Insight for January 17th to the 24th, our full moon. Um, I'm recording this video. I had been doing them live, um, but I, because of a family um, emergency that we are attending to at the end of this week, um, I can't do the live or don't feel I can do a live in, in the time frame that I had originally wanted to. So um, I'm going back to the old way just temporarily and I'm pre-recording this and we'll upload it um, accordingly. The um, The full moon this month is pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. Um, <laughs> The reading that I got for this full moon um, energy is, is, it was intriguing because, you know, it's not always a clear link to how the indigenous see, see the full moon. There's always like, um, there's always, um, threads that are that are res that resonate in some way because let's face it the indigenous are very connected to mother earth and energy and the energy that we are feeling so it is it's not surprising that they've tapped into this knowledge and have been able to help guide us for so many years um this time and I don't know if it's the cards that I have because when I bought the cards, the first thing I saw, <laughs> the thing that jumped out at me the most was the wolf and um, how that like all the nature that's on the, on the graphics. Um, so it's definitely, there is a connection. There's a connection and almost there in an overwhelming um, an overwhelming large percentage of the cards had had wolf or um, had a picture of a wolf or had a picture of a moon in some way and um, it was very grounding very grounding and it really depicted what the indigenous believe the wolf moon does for us helps us so the wolf moon um, according to the messages I was guided to pick up on um, represents protection security and empowerment and that really resonated with the energy that I've been feeling coming in, the energy that my clients have been experiencing, where we are really tapping into our life goals and really getting clear on how we, um, how we see our security, how we see our foundational systems, um, our own empowerment, how we're stepping into our power and honoring ourself as well as other people. As we are embarking on a new journey, because that's what really we are, it, it's a new year, a new year, a new journey, a new age that we're birthing. And it's the first full moon. It's the first full moon. So this moon is, is symbolizing protection, security, and empowerment. But when it's doing that, um, 
there is another layer of energy that is is kind of blanketing hugging <laughs> hugging us um and and that layer is a nurturing energy so it is if you feel the the pull to be more nurturing to for other people that's quite possible but i'd also look at that as a mirror as well and and see okay well are you nurturing and loving yourself how are you nurturing and loving yourself through everything through self-care through routines that you have that help you get comfortable enough to explore what is what those triggers were what those growth opportunities were um, the our intuition is helping us our intuition is helping us look at life right now in a more childlike wonder it's it's not looking at life with judgment it's not looking at life with with um frustration even though we want to <laughs> it is it's looking at life looking at our near future going what's possible it's looking at those triggers or those growth opportunities with childlike wonder and go, what's behind that? Um, it's wanting to go down a new healthier pathway and somehow feeling blocked and going, okay, why am I blocked? What, what's behind that? It's looking behind that energetic wall with wonder and asking yourself, you know, what, what do I see? Can I just have a little peek? Because then your brain goes, oh, she, she actually does want to see what's behind there. And, and she's having some fun with it. So she, that wall will come down and then you'll be able to see what's behind there and, and be able to work with yourself. And I find that if we have fun with it, <laughs> if we make it fun and enjoyable, the brain's a little easier <laughs> on us. The trauma brain's not nearly as scared. It's not nearly as worried. Um, because a lot of times when we are doing something, you know, stepping towards our life goals, stepping towards our intentions for the year, and it's different than what we have been living, our brain will go, oh, I don't know what, that's new. And I'm not comfortable with new changes. Not my strong point. But that's your trauma brain. That's your trauma brain being scared of what's uncertain. So it is having some fun with it. With really no expectation as to how perfect you can be at it right now. And just kind of like explore and have fun and and make it enjoyable find joy in it and then that will train your brain to want to go down that new way instead of the bumpy pitfall muddy old path that you used to take that you'd have to meander around stones and dodge cannons and balls of fire and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Laughing at my, laughing at my own self. I'm not really funny though. <laughs> um, okay, so When we look at life with childlike wonder and curiosity to see what's possible, it helps us to know what steps to take towards our dreams. It helps us to learn to trust ourselves and trust those nudges that and that we can quickly take in and and in take in action. So 
you know, looking at setting goals is not just a one and done thing. We actually have to like do the thing, do the steps towards those goals in order to make them possible in order to create the magic in our life that we want. So when we get really clear of what we what matters to us and we can we slow down enough to feel those nudges to feel that intuition to hear that those those messages we can quickly go yeah that resonates i'm going to do this and it helps us move towards our dreams it helps us move one step at a time towards those goals that we set for this year. And it also helps us realize when we have stepped into doubt, we have stepped into worry or avoidance or um, the shadows. And it, when we realize we've stepped into the shadows, we can go, okay, you know what? There's something off here. How can I step back into the light? How can I step back into my power? And that shadow may come up, but that's part of growing and learning. That is actually, it's not delaying unless you stay there. but it's expanding. It is creating momentum from, from an energetic standpoint, from a scientific standpoint, um, the polarizing energies actually create momentum to help us move forward and rise up. And they'll continue to lead us forward. Because when you realize that if we stay, if we stay where we are and we're even, 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 we're not going anywhere. But we end up in the shadows and all of a sudden we get moved up. We get, we step into our power again. We move. We move towards our goal. We move towards our, our uh, light, creating a life that we love. So I want you to look within and try not to waffle when there's a decision to be made because there's going to be decisions, decisions or choices or um, opportunities, maybe maybe different opportunities that will come to people this week or this week and it will it will give us a choice do we stay here and keep going this way or do we need to possibly step away from what's not aligned and go a do go a new path do what is more aligning to how you are what you if you've gotten clear on your goals then then make sure that it aligns with how you want the life that you want to create and then ground yourself and listen to your guidance listen to your inner voice because your inner voice is going will tell you your inner voice will say you know what this this fits us more or this used to fit you, used to fit you, but you're not that person anymore. So do you really want to go back there? Or that's not, I didn't think that's how you wanted to be. So why are we looking at what's kept us stuck for so long? It is being able to listen to the inner voice without holding any self judgment with a whole lot of love and helping us move forward in some way. I 
Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, family stuff. <laughs> Hashtag real life. We needed to make sure that my daughter was okay. And she is. She is. Okay. So, um, very powerful overall message for this for this week. Before I tap into the other um, the other three messages, the other specific messages that I get for each week, I want to just touch base with you on the light mastery map. So the light mastery map for the full moon is the whole light mastery map. So how this energy works or how it has worked in in recent past is and and it kind of relates to how the messages will help us um, throughout the week as well. So the energy for the full moon is very grounding in that it's at the bottom it's in our earth star right now at the beginning of the week and as it flows through the week it's going to flow up through our lower chakras into our heart chakra and then then in our upper chakras and it's going to be a cleansing energy through that so the week before we were in our lower chakras so if there's stuff that was brought up that needed healing then you will probably experience the same sort of stuff or what's remaining again at the early part of next week or early part of the the week of the full moon so it is it is just helping us you know, with our, again, with our secure safety, our security, our empowerment, our, um, our boundaries at the beginning of the week. And then, it, you know, as we move into the middle of the week, then we are in our, our heart chakra, which is really our area for what we love and desire. Um, you know, it's really tapping into our heart and our mind, um, and, and using our uh, using our power really aligning with what what resonates with our heart and mind um, in a loving way in a very loving way and then our as the end of the week gets closer it is really looking at our big vision for our life, how we're identifying with ourselves in through all of this. So if if there is one big issue that comes up at the beginning of the week, it may have things that you know are relating to each chakra and it will help you clear it out. It'll talk about your safety, security, your empowerment, your boundaries, your your confidence. And then they'll be like, you know, your worthiness, <laughs> how you are interacting with other people, um, the values you are holding, the the what you're willing to sacrifice. In order, in other words, what you're willing to release, the resistance you're willing to release in order to grow, to make that step forward. Um, it's really getting clear on what you actually love and desire for your own life. And then as you go up into the upper chakras, again, it is about your big vision, your dreams, how your identity, how you're manifesting, and how much certainty you have in the life you are creating. How certain you feel about yourself. 
now that we know that, if you want the Light Mastery Map, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a great tool. You can download it at my website at JackieEllis.com. And um, it's a free resource that you can get at the VIP portal, but you have to register through my website first and then, and then get access. Um, get access to the VIP portal and so just sign up for any of the free resources and um, you will get along with the free resources and the VIP portal you will get um, helpful tools and um, messages sent over email um, discounts for programs um, as they're available and many many other things that I'm guided to do as time goes on so as we I'm gonna go into the three messages going forward now the three messages the first one you have the power to manifest a life you love so as above, so below. As above, so below. So we already know based on what we've done in the first two weeks of January in getting like knowing what our big vision is for our life and, and setting those life goals and, and, and really getting clear on what matters to us. It, it is now time to actually step into that person that we need to be in order to make that happen, which may mean that we need to clear out some muck and prepare ourselves for that next step in our journey. It's not necessarily a, it's not a punishment. Those triggers or those growth opportunities are definitely not punishments. They're not the universe going, yeah, you don't deserve that. <laughs> it's the universe going, you know what? I agree with you. This is going to be good for you, but this is what you need to do in order to be ready for that. This is what you need to release in order to step into that person that you want to be. You know, often the, the analogy is used and it's not a wrong analogy. It's like when we, when we are, when we manifest something that we're not ready for, it's like winning the lottery and then burning through it within two weeks. It is, it is winning money at the casino and then losing it five minutes later. It is, <laughs> it is buying a brand new house and then throwing a party and destroying it all within a weekend. When we manifest things for our life and then destroy them right away, we weren't ready as a person to be in that, in that space. And so... The universe is getting very clear with us that, you know, for, for, for a solid foundation, we need to be the people that we need to be before the real abundance comes flowing in. Before our gifts are given to us, because if we are... If it, let's face it, a lot of the gifts that are coming through for people are very much a higher vibrational gift that revol uh, you know, re centers around our upper chakras because that's the energy that is flowing. It's moving us up. It's moving us up into our upper chakras. And if we aren't ready for that, in some way, then we can put ourselves 
in situations where we're being attacked psychically and it won't end well. Physically and mentally, it just won't end well. And so the, the stuff that we are being asked to do, the stuff that we're being asked to clear out so that we can step into that next part of our journey, to step into those roles, is to really protect us and know that we are protected and we have the tools that we need to make sure that we are okay. That we can actually be of service to others without putting ourselves in harm's way. It's a very loving energy that way. It's a very loving energy. So <clears throat> I want you to still know that you have the power to manifest the life that you want, but you will be shown when you do that, you will be shown, you know, the stuff that you need to clear out before you can get to that place. So if you just innocently say, ah, Lord, I want to be the woman that you meant me to be. Hold on to your hat because then all the muck is going to be coming to the surface lovingly to show you what you need to release in order to be the woman he wants you to be. In order to be the woman he want, he knows you as. And it's not meant to put things in your face and in your way to like stop you from doing that. It is to show you what you're holding on to that is no longer serving you any longer. That's the loving energy. Number two. Remember I mentioned choices? I mentioned choices in the overall message for the week. Dreams are good to have. So, you know, again, we have, we have choices. We have, we have dreams that we have. But if they're not specific, um, in that you are open-ended to whatever is possible, but you understand that you want that same feeling, those are good to have, but I want you to make sure that the feeling that, you know, when those opportunities come, that you look at, at how they're resonating within you, is the how they're resonating with you aligning with that feeling. Because if they're not aligning with that feeling, but they look like an amazing opportunity, it may not be the right one for you. So it's, it's allowing yourself to sit with it and, and long enough to go, is this right for me? And it might be scary. It might be, uh, ooh, this, this is going to stretch me <laughs> beyond where I'm comfortable right now. But maybe that's what you need in order to grow and expand into the next, to trust in the universal guidance in some way. Maybe the other opportunity that you know that you can do no matter what is the one that is going to be easy for you, but the one that's going to bore you in a year or in six months. Whatever decision you make, it will still take you to the same point that you need to be. It just one might be a longer detour than the other one. And you'll learn, you'll learn the same lessons just in different ways. Look within. What aligns with the life that you are designing? What aligns with 
with the life that you want to create. Don't necessarily look at the opportunity based on what society thinks you need to be like. You know, for some people, for some people, the big fancy house and the airplanes and the, and the, and the spotlight is the life that they desire. And that's okay. That's okay if they want, if they want that, if they truly are doing that because they want to do that, then that's fine. But for other people, you know, for me, I, I don't necessarily want those things. I would be, I would be perfectly happy with a, a, nice sized cabin in the mountains <laughs> with some decent wi-fi so i can do my <laughs> my uh my work from in in a very scenic area that is comfortable for me um water would have to be close by but um you know maybe there's two places i don't know because it'd have to be warm water and usually mountain water is not very warm. Um, okay, so I just, I want you to really think about like what's your version of success? What does your version of success mean for you? How does that resonate with your heart? And again, this is the middle this is the second energy insight. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that, that it is talking about the heart and, and really what's resonating with you because that's really aligned with your heart chakra in this um, for the middle of the week. Number three, your vision for the week. Um, your vision for this week and how you see your life um, or for your vision for this year and how you see your life um, will spark new ideas. So there will be throughout the week, you may notice nudges for new ideas, new opportunities, new creative sparks that are coming through um, to help you move forward towards creating the life that you want to love that you are loving right now um use that spark don't tuck it away for another day when you get that spark when you recognize that spark that nudge and go "Ooh, i like that grab onto it Grab onto it because what it's doing, it's like, well, it's like a fire on the end of a, a wooden, a wooden stick that is lighting your way to a new opportunity. It is lighting your way to, to growth and creating that life that you love because it's igniting something in you that is very creative energy that aligns with you that aligns with you deep inside of you and so i want you to just kind of go "Ooh, i like that what's what's let's explore that a little more let's do this let's and have fun with it have fun with it um i want to thank you all for joining me on this energy insight if you would like to share this with someone that you know i'd much much appreciate it um especially if you re if anything resonated with you um spread the word other people may get something out of it as well for themselves so do like share and subscribe to this channel if you 
or fall or follow if you're watching this on DLive and um, if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Until next time, be simply you.